What's up Stream Geeks? Paul here and in this video I want to show you how to set up vMix for streaming. Now this is something I've actually covered in quite in depth in my book The Unofficial Guide to vMix and you can actually download this book in the links below for free and there's an entire video playlist for this on YouTube on Facebook for free that you can take a look at this. So check out chapter two and three to learn a little bit more about this, but let's jump into it now so you can get it quick and easy. All right, so first of all, uh, let's close this out. I've got a brand new fresh vMix. Obviously step one is to download and install vMix. I'm gonna show you how to get vMix set up pretty quickly and easily here. And then I'm gonna show you how to configure it all for streaming. Now once vMix is on, it's worth taking a look at the settings area real quick. And the reason why is because there's some interesting settings in here you're gonna to wanna to make or set up properly for streaming, recording, all of that. Now, first of all, um, the first thing you probably wanna do is just make sure that your frame rate, that your output size is all correct. So I'm, I'm doing 1080p, Basically at 30 frames a second, 29.97 is essentially 30 frames per second. You can set it up in 30p, which is very normal. Um, doesn't matter. 29.97 is just uh, the broadcast frame rate world. And I'm doing 1920 by 1080, but of course you could do 4K, et cetera, et cetera. I'm not going to go into every single uh, feature here, just the ones ideal for streaming and recording. Now in the output section, um, you, this is where you handle like getting all your NDI outputs, uh, your full screen outputs, and things of that nature. Um, not super important, but uh, a couple other things that I do highly recommend is looking at performance here and making sure if you have a graphics card to use it. Uh, you can see here I have the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3090 enabled and installed. So if you have a graphics card, vMix loves graphics cards, enable it. Uh, it won't be enabled by default and you can actually turn on high performance mode and low latency capture, which is super helpful. If you're recording, you can set up your vMix recordings area there. Um, and then your external output, this is what your uh, vMix video streaming settings are as well. Now, this is pretty much you know, going to be set up and set and forget, but I do want to uh, give you guys something important, a very first kind of starter setup here um, for vMix for streaming is, now vMix is going to restart real quick because I did a session, that's okay. Uh, because I made some changes, it's going to restart. But uh, in the desktop of Windows, you can right click, let's get rid of this Stream Deck thing here. You can, and I'll zoom in to make this easier for you to see, you can right click the desktop, okay, show more options, and there's an NVIDIA control panel. That is something a lot of people don't know about, and it's how you enable your NVIDIA graphics card uh, to work with vMix. So you go into Manage 3D Settings, Program Settings, I've shown so many people this, and you actually have to go in and choose vMix and add it to be used with NVIDIA. So, you know, you're prob if you're using vMix, you're, you're almost very likely to be using an NVIDIA graphics card and Windows, so I did want to mention that. All right, let's move forward. Now, the next step, of course, is to add all your inputs and outputs. So clicking the Add Input button will take us to this area where we can add all of our cameras. So I'm just going to add one or two cameras just to show you kind of how it works. I'll add an NDI camera. Um, this is actually kind of a cool shot. Let's see. I'll get like a, a ceiling shot. Maybe these are all the NDI cameras in my studio. All right, we'll choose this one just to make sure it's working. I'm going to go to the PTZ tab. This is a PTZ Optics uh, camera here. So we'll click connect. Just double check. Okay, it's working. I can control the PTZ Optics camera pan tilt zoom and it's working just fine. Let's see if I can find myself on the screen. Um, so that's how you add inputs really quickly. We're just going to add one input, configure vMix for streaming, and we'll be all set. All right, here we go. There we go. All right, cool. So now that we are in vMix and we've got an input in here, we're going to configure vMix for streaming. Now, there's a stream button in the bottom here, and if you click the stream button, it will start streaming. 
Uh, but if you haven't set it up for streaming, you might want to hit the configure button, the little uh, cog there to start setting it up for streaming. Now, VMAX can stream to three locations. You got one, two, three. Uh, by default, you know, kind of custom RTMP is the, is the first option. So you can just type in the URL and stream key, stream to anywhere. You can also log directly into, let's say, Facebook or, you know, Restream or all these different places. Those are nice because then you can just log in and pick up all of the, you know, credentials that are available to you, such as your YouTube Live information. So let's assume you're going to stream to like two destinations, right? Maybe you can, you can stream up to three if you want. Um, you're going to want to choose a quality level. And vMix gives you a whole bunch of presets, but you can actually set up vMix for streaming in a lot, in a totally custom way. You, most people do a, one of these presets. Now, uh, H.264 is one of the most popular RTMP streaming protocols. So you can come down here and you can see that vMix has a whole bunch of 1080p and 4K streaming profiles for you. Um, basically, what you're seeing here is some of the standards for Facebook, some of the standards for Twitch, some of the vertical streaming standards, some of the standards for YouTube. So I like to come in here and say, okay, I'm doing 1080p. And then the number you're really looking for is the megabits per second. That's your upload speed. So six megabits per second would be six megabits of upload speed. That's essentially the quality. So when you come in here, if you really want to um, customize all of this, you can choose your bit rate. The higher the bit rate, the higher the quality of the video. But you don't want to exceed the amount of upload speed that you have or else your red streaming button in vMix will start to turn orange, indicating that you're losing packets. So you really want to stay within your upload speed options there. So, you know, most YouTube videos are in like the 10,000 range. So your streaming quality should probably be similar to that. Um, a lot of this stuff is more technical than most people need. But essentially, if you stick with these presets, you're going to be golden. 2160 is 4K. 1080 is obviously full HD, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so remember, if you add a second or a third stream, you are adding upload speed to your outbound internet connection and you know you could have issues. So that's why usually it uses the stream one quality. And also I highly recommend clicking use hardware encoder. Okay, that uses the NVIDIA graphics card. And once all of that's done, you can hit the start stream button. You can start one or start all. You can start each of these independently if you decide to. Uh, by doing that. And that is the way that you can set up vMix for live streaming. So hopefully that was helpful to you guys. Again, I did want to mention that uh, this is all explained in detail. There's a whole Udemy course if you want to get a certification for vMix, the unofficial guide to vMix. Check out the links below. I highly recommend picking up this book, having it beside your vMix system. Don't forget to like this video and let me know in the comments if it's been helpful or if you need an update to the unofficial guide to vMix YouTube playlist. We're always making new videos here at Stream Geeks for you all. So show us some love, hit that like button, and I'll see you guys in the next video.